Hello, everybody. My name is Zach Shum, and I'm here with Dr. Chelsea Harbach. We are in the Iowa State University Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic, and we are going to discuss today some diagnostic clinics as good resources for scouting and identification of plant pests and insects. So a little bit of a review here. We have some basic principles of integrated pest management. So if we have a pest on a plant, what do we do in order to manage or control that pest? The most important thing, which is the thing that plant and insect clinics help with, is the identification and to some extent uh, assisting clients with how to best monitor pests. It's really important that if you have a pest in your field on a plant, you correctly and accurately identify that insect. That is really what plant and insect diagnostic clinics are for. And we certainly offer some information on how to monitor pests in your own landscape as well. Some of the other things that clinics don't really help with, but are really important for integrated pest management programs is the setting or the, the use of action thresholds for managing a pest that you have identified as a problem in your landscape or on your plant. Prevention of pests is also really important and a principle of integrated pest management. And then the actual management or the control of pests as well. So these are the principles of integrated pest management. But again, diagnostic clinics are a resource to assist you with identification of those pests. And we can also provide advice, advice on how to manage pests or how to monitor them as well. So the Iowa State University Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic is a member of the National Plant Diagnostic Network. This is a nationwide diagnostic network that has diagnostic labs throughout the entire country and throughout US territories. So really each state has at least one lab that can assist clients, whether they be homeowners or farmers or anybody else with the identification of plant problems. We'll discuss this a little bit more soon as well. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about the National Plant Diagnostic Network as a whole. Now, these are things that have come directly from the NPDM website, so it's a little bit wordy, but I post it there nonetheless so you can read what the NPDM network or what the NPDM is and what we do. So we are a diagnostic system, again, nationwide and through U.S. territories that assists with the quick detection and accurate identification of both plant pests and pathogens. And then we then communicate that information to farmers and to sometimes regulatory agencies effectively, timely, and accurately. So overall, we are trying as an entire network to enhance health and productivity of plants and agricultural systems, but also natural ecosystems in the United States and US territories. And again, we do this by providing high quality diagnostics, identifications of pests, and then communicating it to clientele, partners, stakeholders, of federal agencies when necessary. The vision of the National Plant Diagnostic Network is, you know, we understand that challenges to plant health are constantly increasing. This can be due in part to global trade. Plants and pathogens are always being sent to other regions of the world from pretty much everywhere, going to just about everywhere. So we understand this as a constant problem in plant health and contributing to plant health challenges. So our vision to also is to quickly and accurately identify these pathogens. And we understand that doing this is essential to plant or to protect plant systems. NPDN is also a vital part of national biosecurity. Again, as I mentioned, plants are constantly being shipped worldwide. And that means plant pathogens are always arriving in new places. So being able to accurately and correctly identify pathogens quickly is very vital to national biosecurity infrastructure. And also we are a network that is advancing our technologies to meet these challenges. So we're constantly updating protocols, getting new test methods into these clinics. And the whole goal of this is that when we can correctly, accurately and quickly identify plant problems, we can then help or reinforce environmental health and plant health nationwide and again in US territories. So again, coming back to this National Plant Diagnostic, Diagnostic Network map, every one of these states, as mentioned before, is going to have at least one diagnostic lab that is a member of the National Plant Diagnostic Network that includes in U.S. territories. So Puerto Rico, Guam, they also have their own lab that is affiliated or a member of this network. So that means that Iowa has their own National Plant Diagnostic Network lab, and that is the Iowa State University Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic. So we are an individual lab that is a member of this network that 
tries to help the network meet those national plant health goals. So our mission in the Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic at Iowa State University is to provide accurate and timely plant health diagnostics. And this is in the realm of insects, nematodes, and abiotic disorders of plants. We also focus on educating clients and the public on plant health, plant diseases, and insect problems on plants, and also the backbone of all this, which is integrated pest management. Our services are available for anybody that comes to us. It doesn't matter if you're a homeowner that has two plants, or even if you're just a homeowner that has one indoor house plant. Uh, farmers that have hundreds of acres of plants can also come to us. ISU Extension, so different extension offices throughout the state can also come to us. It doesn't matter who you are, if you have a plant problem or if you have an insect question or problem on a plant or in your home, you can come to us for diagnostic services or for just informational purposes and assistance. The Iowa State University Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic provides many different services for clients. Those are just a generic plant problem diagnosis. diagnosis. So this includes things like microscopy of your sample, looking under a microscope for visual pathogens or insect problems. We can also isolate or culture plant pathogens. So we're essentially trying to grow out pathogens from your plant sample if it isn't visually available or visually seen. Uh, moist chambers, which those moist environments can help grow out pathogens from plant samples. So all of this is included in a basic plant problem diagnostic, diagnostic test. There are additional add-ons like molecular or serological assays that incur additional fees. Uh, the fees are all available on our website. We'd be happy to answer questions or you can just visit our website for fees. But uh, for, to put it in perspective, a plant problem diagnosis is a $25 service. So relatively inexpensive, all things considered. And then there's optional add-ons. We do a generic insect identification service as well, where you can just send us your insect and we will identify it for you. This can be from a plant in your garden, a plant in a large field. It can be something you found inside your house. It doesn't really matter, we can help you with it. We also can do photo diagnostics with insects, which we'll talk about on the very last slide. Uh, photo diagnostics are always free. Insect identification in the lab under a microscope is a $10 fee, very, very small. We are one of only a couple labs right now that offer a molecular insect identification. So if we can't identify your insect using a microscope or just using, using visuals, we can also extract that insect's DNA and identify it that way, which is effective most of the time that a microscope identification isn't. One of our largest sample types that comes into the plant and insect diagnostic clinic here are soybean cyst nematode egg counts. So these are coming from fields that have or will be growing soybeans. We essentially just get nematode egg counts to assist growers with determining how they're going to manage their fields or plantings for that following year. And finally, we have complete vermiform nematode counts. This is mostly from corn, but we can also get some samples in from turf grass. Uh, these is, are essentially providing a service where we identify and count all the nematodes from that sample that you send in. Again, we have a lot, all of our fees on our website, or you're welcome to contact us. We're also willing to receive inquiries from anybody that wants to submit a sample, and we will tell you what we think about your sample and what type of testing we think you would need, so you can kind of get a feel for what that sample or that testing is going to cost you before you submit a sample. But most samples that are submitted just end up with basic plant problem diagnosis um, or a basic insect identification, which are $10 or $25. Uh, soybean cyst nematode egg counts, our most common one, is a little bit more expensive, but all these prices are available on our website. In terms of what the clinic does every year, uh, we receive samples from throughout the state of Iowa. We also have permits to receive samples from out of state, but certainly samples that come from within the state of Iowa are the most common thing that we receive. Uh, out of state clients, they also often, more often than not, use their in state laboratories. Uh, that are a part of that NPDN. So in 2023, we received about 1,795 samples. Minus contract work, we had a couple of large clients send us hundreds of, of samples. So that's 1,795 is everything minus that. Uh, you'll see in red there, that big chunk of that pie chart are soybean cyst nematode egg counts. And then all of the other sample types are a smaller chunk of that. Broadleaf tree samples, conifers, field crops, things of that nature. So the bulk are soybean cyst nematode egg counts, which is essentially a soil sample. Uh, the others is kind of a mix. So we get a little bit of everything in the clinic, which is, is really nice. 
Uh, so we can we end up seeing a diverse number of plant problems, uh, but we can help our clients again with pretty much anything they send in. In terms of field crop samples, we received a ton of field crops. Again, uh, about 1,342, so over 1,000 samples. Most of those, again, are soybean cyst nematode egg counts, but also a large number of corn nematode egg counts. So that's that complete nematode count that I discussed earlier. And we do also plant problem diagnosis for field crops, but it's definitely a smaller proportion. Uh, but definitely we get a lot of field crop samples in as well. And with that, I believe I will turn it over to Chelsea to discuss the rest. Okay. So back to talking about um, diagnostic clinics as a resource for um, for uh, people who are scouting crop fields. Um, you know, I wanted we wanted to show you this data to show you, you know, we the 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 portion of the pie for field crop samples that we get that are actual actual plant problem diagnosis samples um, is pretty small. Um, and you know, maybe that's okay, maybe it's not. Uh it the 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 most important thing is that um, you know, the the plant health problems and pests that are in the field are getting accurately identified before management methods are applied in that field. Um, so we wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the important things to consider um, if you're having difficulty identifying a plant problem in the field. Um, number one, this is um, probably my personal biggest pet peeve, but I'm sure many plant diagnosticians have the same pet peeve, is, um, is this. Uh, the accuracy of the plant problem diagnosis is dependent on the quality of the sample and the information we receive. So um, too often um, we get samples that are not suitable for diagnostics. Um, this, you know, is not exclusive to um, field crop samples, but, um, but it is common in field crop samples. Um, and that ties into the concept in my next slide. Um, we're not, um, we're, we're plant diagnosticians, we're not plant morticians. So we're not in the business of doing plant autopsies. Um, generally, um, you know, the best time to identify a plant problem in a field is when they're still living plants. That's why it is so important to be scouting all season long. Um, that way you can identify plant problems when they're starting and not after you have a dead, a dead patch of plants in the field. You'll find um, with every National Plant Diagnostic Network lab, um, so, you know, if you, if you're, if you don't live in Iowa, you want to submit a, a sample to your state and NPDN lab, all of these labs have, um, submission guidelines and following these submission guidelines is going to be really important to, um, to collecting a, a sample that's going to be suitable, um, or valid for, for diagnostics. And I'm actually going to give you um, some tips for getting a quick and confident diagnosis when you have um, a plant problem in the field that has you stumped. First is what I just talked about. Um, use those online resources for um, that have guidelines for collecting samples. Um, and if you ever have a question about, you know, the right kind of sample to collect to identify a problem in the field, uh, never, never hesitate to reach out. Um, we we handle those kinds of questions all the time, and we would rather spend time talking with you to make sure that you get the right kind of sample that we need for diagnostics than having you try to follow you know, directions, maybe they're a little unclear, and then we get a sample that is not suitable for diagnostics, then we have to ask you to send a different sample. And it just slows down the, the time, um, which is like pretty critical during the growing season um, to, to figure out what's going, going wrong with the field. Next is to, um, again, scout frequently and to catch plant health problems early. Um, so again, before plants die completely. So, um, you know, there's many scouting tools. I obviously, um, 
you know, it, it, you can use drones to scout, which, which can be effective. Um, but there's almost nothing better than just like visual scouting with your own eyes, um, and getting out there to, to make sure that you can like find these changes early in the season is gonna, um, make sure that you have the ability to send in things that look weird. Um, you know, a lot of things are pretty easy to identify in the field, but when you have those weird ones that have you um, stumped, um, finding those early and seeing if we can um, identify what's going wrong and, you know, provide management recommendations is going to be really important. Next, and this is a big one. It might seem simple, but it is a big one. Um, what, whatever clinic you're submitting a diagnostic or a sample for diagnostics to, make sure that you fill out the sample form in its entirety. Um, this, um, so in the, at the Iowa State Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic, we have a sample submission form that has two sides. What you're seeing here is just one side, um, but too often um, we don't have all of the information filled out on both sides and um, in the clinic we're um, especially when it comes to plant problem diagnostics we're kind of um, I, I liken what we do to um, detective work so we are collecting clues um, the more clues that we can get um, the the more confident we can feel about our, diag our diagnoses. Um, so filling out the sample submission form in its entirety um, is really, really helpful for diagnosticians. Next, um, and this would be considered more clues, is including photos from the field. Um, that includes not just like close-ups of sick plants. Um, I really like getting pictures like this where you can see, you know, the distribution of the problem in the field. Um, photos, you know, the old saying, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and that stands true for plant diagnostics. Um, so that is something that I find really, really helpful um, to uh, getting a quick and confident diagnosis of plant problems. And lastly, um, is to avoid sending dead plants. There's very, very few cases where um, we receive a dead plant and we can um, diagnose any plant diseases or plant pathogens that are associated with that plant sample. Um, and this picture here is one of the very few cases um, where I, I can find three different pathogens that affected the soybean. Um, we have uh, sclerotinia stem rot or white mold, uh, charcoal rot, and um, a diaporthes species complex that, um, you know, contributes to uh, pot and stem blight. However, most of the time when we get tissue that's completely dead, especially if somebody's wondering, um, you know, what, what killed my corn early or what killed my soybeans early, um, those samples are really, really difficult to get a confident diagnosis because even if we isolate from that plant tissue, the likelihood of recovering, if there was a pathogen involved, um, a pathogen that was um, associated with the early senescence is, is really low when we get dead plant tissue. Um, so avoid sending dead plants. You can do that by making sure that you're scouting frequently and sending in plants as they're dying and not when they're completely dead. So if crop health problems have you stumped, have no fear, call your local National Plant Diagnostic Network lab. We're here, for, we're here to help. Um, and th this stands for, I, I, we're very familiar with the labs in the North Central region, but the entire network, um, you know, we, we have people that are like, this is our job, this is our, our bread and butter. So I, as I mentioned, it's oftentimes pretty easy to identify um, crop diseases or insects affecting crops in the field. Um, but there do come times when you see something weird out there that has you stumped. That's when that's when you come to us, and we we can help you um, help you answer those questions. Because again, 
and this is the third time you're seeing this slide, but it's that important. The the very first um very first part of or very first IPM principle is to identify and monitor pests. So you can't get to step four without doing step one. So it's just absolutely critically important that you get an accurate identification of what's causing problems in the field before you move on to management. Oops. Um, and with that, uh, this is our contact information. Um, you're welcome to contact us for questions or again, um, you know, re find your, if you're not in Iowa and you want to send something to your local lab, um, you know, go to the NPDN website, which is just npdn.org and find your state lab. Um, otherwise, we're we, we do accept samples from out of state, so you're welcome to come to us too. Thank you.